Hi, this is how we built a raised pond in our garden. It's part of a wider garden transformation that I'm making other videos about as well. The, we did originally have a pond, but it was very sludgy, full of plants, not much water, and it's built on a slope. So we wanted to have a raised pond with the front edge higher than the back edge. First of all, we built a plywood frame to pause the cement footings into to form a base for our breeze blocks. We also created a, ra a footing at the front to put the breeze blocks on at the front too. This is what it looked like with the plywood removed. You can also see the extended footing coming down beside the fence for our raised beds, which I'll talk about in another video. We positioned the breeze blocks roughly where we wanted them to be so we didn't make any mistakes when we actually mortared them in. As you can see, the inner edge of the footing actually creates a nice shelf in order for us to put plants on once the pond is complete. The inside of the pond, the base, slopes down so it's actually deeper at the front than it is at the back. We've left a space at the back for the pump pipe to go through and also the overflow pipe and the electrics for the pump. We next got an angle grinder and removed any sharp edges from the inside of the pond before putting down the liner for the pond. So this is the underlay, which is made of like a woolen kind of felt fabric. So I just put it all in there, making a nice soft base. Then I put in the liner. It was really hard to get it to look good because of the shape of the pond. So I decided it would be easier to do this when, once it actually had some water in it. So began filling it up. And then once it was full, I was able to kind of remove quite a lot of the creases, but obviously not all of them. Once the liner had had time to settle, we removed the edging and we glued down the liner actually onto the breeze blocks so that it wouldn't get pulled down or moved when we put the coping stones on. At the back, you can see that the liner is covering up the gap that I'd left for the pipe. But underneath that is just a kind of rolled up bit of liner. So it's quite soft, so it can be squished down. The reason that we were taking care to make sure that the water had an overflow pipe was because we don't want the water to raise up above the level of the coping stones. You go down between the pond and the coping stones go down under the liner or into the hollow breeze blocks of the wall. Of the wall. So this is the, the overflow pipe and the pump pipe from the other side. The way that I did this, I was looking at putting special things through the liner that the pipe would attach onto, but I thought that'd be too difficult. So I just kind of squished down the pond liner. So there's pond liner and the wool liner under there and it's just kind of squished down what would be better if, if the pipe overflow pipe was a little bit narrower diameter and a bit higher up so that the pond level was a tiny bit higher I think it would look better so what the plan is is that in the, through the overflow pipe the electricity for the pond pipe will also feed through that into the pond and hopefully when I do install the pump this pipe will, this is just a temporary pipe that I'm going to pull out and hopefully be able to push the longer length of pipe through in its place. I just put that there in now for now to um, keep the space. Then